We're going back to basics in this video where I'll show you how to get set up in GarageBand for Mac and dive into some of the tools and features that'll help you to hit the ground running when creating new projects. Hey, I'm Patrick and welcome to the GarageBand Guide where we're all about helping you master GarageBand and improving your music. A quick side note here, I'm using the latest version of GarageBand 10.4.1 running on macOS Big Sur. If you're running an older version, you can still follow along at home as while the latest version looks a bit different, all of the features, buttons and menus are in pretty much the same place across all versions. If there are any differences, I'll let you know. If it's your first ever time opening GarageBand on Mac, you'll be taken directly to the project menu by default. Usually, GarageBand will automatically open the last project you are working on when you open it. From inside your project, you can get back to the project menu by clicking File in the toolbar and selecting New. You have quite a few options here, and this is one of the areas where the latest version of GarageBand changes things up a little from the previous versions. Older versions have a slightly different order on the left here, so bear that in mind as we go through everything. First up, you can open a new empty project. This will open up a new project with absolutely nothing loaded up, a complete blank canvas. This is my preferred way to start a brand new, fresh project, and we'll come back to it a little later on. The recent tab shows you the last 10 projects you've worked on in chronological order. This makes it really handy for jumping in and out of projects you may be working on simultaneously. The Learn to Play and Lesson Store are where you'll find some really high quality and useful tutorials. You can download individual lessons for guitar, piano, and artist lessons from the Lesson Store and access them from the Learn to Play tab. Apple made all of these lessons free a couple of years back and they're great to dive into, the artist lessons specifically. The Project Template tab allows you to select from six templates that open GarageBand with certain instruments or features already selected. The Keyboard Collection template opens GarageBand with nine keyboard and synth software instrument tracks already loaded up. Whereas the Songwriter template loads up a selection of drummer, software instruments and audio tracks. While these can create a good starting point and are worth diving into for complete beginners to get a taste of what GarageBand offers, when you're ready to start working on your own projects, I would highly recommend starting fresh with the empty project option. At the bottom of the window is this details drop down menu. Here you can set up the tempo of your project and don't worry if you don't know it off the top of your head. You can actually tap out or click out, I guess, the timing of your song here if you need to. You can set the key signature of your project here. You can change this from inside your project as well, so don't worry too much again if you're not sure. The key signature of your project will affect how things like auto-tune behave. And you can change the time signature of your project here too. If you have an audio interface hooked up to your Mac, you can select it as your input device here. Otherwise, you can select from the inbuilt microphone if you want to record real audio that way. If you do have an interface attached to your Mac, you can select it as the output device. That way your audio will come out of any attached studio monitors or speakers or from its headphone output. If you just want to plug headphones into your Mac's headphone port, select built-in output here. 
When you're ready, click Choose to open your fresh new GarageBand project and select your first track. Straight away, you'll be asked what track type you want to create first. Selecting Drummer adds a drummer that will automatically play along with your song. The Guitar Real Audio track allows you to play and record through virtual amps and pedal effects. The regular Real Audio track lets you record using a microphone or line input, or you can drag and drop audio files. And the Software Instrument track allows you to plug in a USB keyboard or use your typing keyboard to play and record using a wide variety of instruments. All right, if you're ready for the next step, then give this video a click. In it, I take a deep dive into GarageBand's software instrument track and show you how to get the most from it. Take care of yourself. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.